The following presentation was recorded at the 2012 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond Sponsors in 2012 for helping make these videos possible. All right, guys, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, kind of stay on track so that other folks can do their thing coming up. Um, so my name is Mark Shropshire, and uh, uh, I'm here representing, thanks, got some fan clubs here. Um, and uh, I'm here representing uh, Shardug, and I want to talk about creating and deploying Drupal distributions. Um, and so this is something I kind of dig on doing quite a bit and thinking through this and learning all the time because there's always new ways to accomplish it. And there's a lot of moving parts. Um, so I kind of want to jump right into kind of a little bit about distributions um, so if folks aren't familiar. Um, so, um, so some components that are involved in a distribution, uh, you, uh, at least for Drupal, is Drupal core. So that's all the files uh, that make up what is Drupal when you download it from Drupal.org. Um, and then there's the supporting modules, themes, and libraries. So when I'm talking modules, contrib modules, contrib themes, libraries could be external third party, could be CSS grids, could be uh, jQuery UI, anything like that, um, that are, need to be pulled in to make this site happen. <clears throat> Drupal installation profiles, which have been around for quite a while, um, but if you've used Drupal, this is what basically lives in the profiles folder out of the root of Drupal. And your install profiles just are code that say, hey, this is how to configure this Drupal site when you do the installer. So you, you're, you're running an installation profile anytime you install Drupal through the instructions that are included uh, with the readmes with Drupal and you download it. So that's kind of a traditional way to deploy and that is just manually installing Drupal. Nothing wrong with that. Um, it's totally, totally uh, doable. And, uh, and then the last component is features and general distribution modules. And uh, I, I kind of put those together, they're not the same thing, but, um, but you know, features is a module I'll talk about in just a minute. And what I mean by general distribution modules is a lot of times you just need a, what, what I call, and others have called a glue module, some th module that comes with a distribution that just wraps up some housekeeping and things that need to happen, maybe include update scripts to run when new versions of the distribution are installed. So um, that's what I mean there. So just a regular Drupal module that just has a lot of general purpose things that you make, you wanna make sure that this, when it installs, a user gets. Um, some of it could be, you know, content or just configs. So, so types of distributions, um, and, and, and I'll, I'll make sure that, you know, my slides get out there uh, and, and put that out, tweet that out on the, you know, some of the Drupal Camp Charlotte, you know, get it retweeted on there. But, uh, the reason I want to mention that was I've got some reference URLs here, so you don't have to write those down unless you want to or whatever, but so we'll have the slides out there. So this comes straight from some of the distribution documentation on Drupal.org, which is actually better than it used to be, a lot better. Someone's put a lot of work into it, um, and uh, so things are, things are getting better. But the two types of distributions um, that Drupal.org folks break, break things down into is a full feature distribution. Uh, this is... You know, this could be, I mean, how many folks are, you know, know about Open Atrium or familiar with Open Atrium? So a good number of folks. So Open Atrium, for those that don't know, is a, uh, is, a, is a Drupal 6 distribution that has, in the package, has everything you need to basically kind of do Basecamp kind of things. If you're familiar with Basecamp, project management has calendars and groups and uh, you can, it has case tracker, so you can do support tickets or track software development inside. Um, that's, you know, Open Atrium's a great example of a, of a well, you know, fleshed out distribution um, that, that tries to do everything and it get, they get updates and, um, uh, and I know folks are working on a Drupal 7 version, so kind of pumped about that, but there, there are a lot of distributions out there that are full featured distros um, and there's many examples, um, but, um, but I did want to mention too that if you go to drupal.org, you can um, go to what used to be called installation profiles for downloads. They have, they've rebranded this as distributions. So if you go to Drupal.org under download and extend, you can, download, you can go through and check out a lot of distributions that folks have uploaded and shared. 
um, shared there, and you can, some of the things we're gonna go through demo today, we'll show you how you can actually pull those down and use them and play with them, and it's a great way to kind of uh, try new systems out. Even if you just wanna look at the code at how they set something up or configured it and then kind of, kind of uh, borrow it for your own needs, it's a great way to kind of learn about things. Um, and then there's the other distributions is, so let, let's say that in a lot of design shops, a lot of uh, Drupal shops do this, but let's say that you, uh, you know, you commonly build sites and you start out with, you know, 25 modules and you always use those modules and maybe there's some configurations that you always use on every Drupal site. There's, you know, whatever it is that you always want to get to, you know, it's not fun if you're doing a lot of web work and every time you're having to, pull those down manually, unzip them, put them in place, put them on a server, do the clickety-clickety through the UI and configure everything. What, it, what, what this does for you is this allows you to say, I'm building a distro that's, that's not really, I mean, you could give it to somebody, but they probably wouldn't have, they probably wouldn't want to tailor it for themselves, but it's for you and your shop maybe, or you know, your company, or just for you, to, to easily get up and running and have things configured so you can quickly start working on a website. Because that's what we want to do for clients. Clients want to see stuff pretty quick and, you know, you can kind of get started at least um, by just running these, these uh, uh, quick starts for developers. I say developers and site builders because I think, I think that's important. I think if we can continue to make distributions easier to install, we're going to have a really good chance at having people that maybe aren't developers, but site builders leverage that um, and, and, and be able to get, to get down to business. <clears throat> so some of, the, some of the tools to kind of make this stuff happen. And, this is, this is not a comprehensive list, but I've got a few slides here with various tools uh, that I use. Uh, so you guys may have others and, and uh, can bring those up, that'd be awesome. But, uh, and these tools also do other things. So I don't wanna, I first don't wanna misconstrue that, you know, these tools are just for distributions. They actually are powerful and do many, many other things. Um, so the first one that's, that I think anybody that does Drupal development has grown to love um, uh, is Drush and Drush Make. Now, with the latest version, Drush 5, Drush Make, which used to be a separate project, has been included, uh, which just makes it easier to always have those tools available. Um, we'll talk about a little bit more about what Drush Make does in a little bit, but um, there's some links for the Drush project, and um, drush.ws is, is the documentation, which is a great site to reference. But you can, you can get the documentation through command line, too, so, but if you want to look at it on the web, it's a good place. Uh, and and their part of Drush comes with a, I did want to mention this, there's a Drush tool called Make Generate, um, and I haven't used this in a while, but, so I'm hoping it works, I'm hoping I'm standing up here and saying go try this. Okay, so Zach's used it with Open Blog, so I, um, and, and I didn't know if you know, Zach's awesome, so just want to shout out to Zach, but, um, and, uh, but, so Make Generate, what that does, you could have an existing Drupal site, and you can run Drush Make Generate, and it's going to basically create a make file that has all the modules and contrib and pieces, working pieces that you need to dis distribute that exact same setup to another site, which the make files are a piece of what, you know, what is a distribution. Um, Profiler, Profiler is, a, is an optional module that you can use to help build distributions. Um, I kind of go back and forth with it. I like it sometimes, sometimes I don't want to use it, but what Profiler does is it lets you, um, it basically lets you do things in a distribution through make syntax. So if I want to automatically have users configured, roles configured, maybe a home page content item, you know, node one that's set up, it basically allows you to have that baked in without having to code that with just raw PHP um, uh, and other hooks and things. So you don't have to use it, it's worth checking out. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty well documented out there, but. Uh, but it's, it's definitely a neat tool. Don't, I don't want to make it seem as if it's a requirement. It's something I like to use sometimes. Sub-install profiles, that's something Profiler can do, but actually that lets you have kind of a, uh, a main profile that maybe has certain configurations for maybe what you use a lot, but then you can have sub-profiles that maybe can add additional functionality in during the build of the files process, pull in other modules and themes and things. Um, I don't really use uh, sub-profiles too much, um, but I, I may be in the near future on some projects I've got going. There's a link to that guy, too. So, so features, I'm just going to, uh, you know, th this, is, this is a little out of order, and I talked to Matthew Connerton before we started. Uh, it would have been really cool to maybe do my session and then kick off into 
uh, uh, features, but if, if you missed Matthew's, uh, and Matthew's in the back with the, with the cap there, but if you, miss, if you miss, missed his, uh, his session on features, he's got some other previous sessions. Google it, and this video, uh, his video will be online at some point, so keep a watch out for that. But features is, uh, is basically wrapping up configuration and converting configuration that you normally click around the UI and convert it to code um, so that that code can be easily deployed and distributions love that to be able to quickly deploy just code. Again, you're trying to avoid clicking and configuring and adding content types manually and adding views manually and doing all that. You, you wanna do that once, configure it, and then wrap that up in a feature. Uh, Matthew, does that sound pretty, pretty close? All right, he's giving me a thumbs up. So ch check out Matthew's uh, information on that, and, uh, and there's the link for features. Um, I'm not gonna get into packaging, uh, Drupal.org distributions. There is a process for that, which a lot, some of us are learning. I'm learning a little bit about it. Zach's learning quite a bit about it. And, but I'm not gonna get into that. I did wanna mention, though, when you properly set up a distribution and put it on Drupal.org and host it there, which I think is a great place to, to host it, of course, since it's Drupal-related and keep it in the community, um, there's, there's some documentation here, and I'll include, that's that node 642116, that's the node that has that documentation. Check that out, there's some additional tools that you'll need, drupal.org drush, which uh, you'll add to your drush configurations in the, usually in the, your home directory drush folder, you'll drop that in there, or just check it out from yet, but that gives you some additional commands to make sure that your make files are proper and set up the way that Drupal.org expects them to be, because Drupal.org does some additional things with distros. It'll, not only does it allow you just to download and run the distro locally, but it'll actually, you know, uh, zip up that is a package, so somebody can just download all the files if they don't want to use make. I, I think that's still true, Zach. Is it, so once you do a release, an actual Drupal.org release, it will wrap up and you can, somebody can easily download, and this, again, this may be good for site builders that don't want to get into the system administration side of it, they can still use, a, use this and just download those files and install it like they would a normal Drupal site manually, which is nothing wrong with that if they want to uh, quickly get that rolling. So di distribution files, and uh, this is not necessarily a complete list, but this is the, a lot of the files that you're going to want to probably use to get going. Uh, some of them are optional. Um, so, so we'll talk through some of these. I've got... Um, Let's see here. So, I think, yeah, okay. So, um, I, I didn't think I broke these out as separate things, but I'm actually going to open some of these files up and show you some code here in a second. Um, but if you go to the node reference at the bottom of this slide, um, there's some detail on what some of these files are, but I'm going to kind of tell you what these are uh, generally. Um, so, in starting in Drupal 7, the .info file, has some basically, it's a text file with configuration that lets you declare dependencies for modules that need to be enabled by default, lets you name the distribution. Uh, and uh, this is actually, the .info is part of a Drupal install profile. Um, so it doesn't have to be just, it doesn't have to be, you don't do it just for the full distribution, but if you're just doing an install profile by itself, you still need an info file. But it basically, like a module info file, declares all the information Drupal needs to recognize it as a sort of module, I'll call it sort of module because a lot of it, pieces of a uh, profile work just like a module, um, it's just a little bit different. Um, so the info file declares a lot of information you need to get it going. Uh, the profile uh, file, uh, dot profile, is, it, it actually runs with a fully bootstrapped version of Drupal, so the hook, most hooks and anything you can use in a module can be used uh, in that dot profile, so you can place code right in there um, uh, to, to execute and configure uh, different pieces. The, uh, um, the dot install, and this, this file, I believe, I believe this one might be optional, um, but it, it basically allows you to, you could add content and other configurations through the dot install. Um, you'll notice if you, um, you know, a good way to learn about the install profile piece of a distro is just to go to a Drupal download Drupal 7, go to the profiles folder, look at the standard and minimal um, profiles that are in the profiles folder, and just kind of look at the code. I mean, that code's been vetted. I think that's a great place to start. It's been vetted by the community, and it's a good place to start to learn about how they've accomplished these pieces um, as a community. And uh, 
So just want to throw that out there. Now that kind of covers the install profile piece of it. Just you know, and so you could use those three files, make a profile, drop it in an existing Drupal site, install it. I mean, not an existing Drupal site that's been installed, but a code base. And when you do the install, you would you would be able to execute you know the contents of those three files. But that doesn't completely make a distribution. Um, you know, another component for a distribution is. Uh, is, is how do I get the files in place? How do I get that, uh, all those files downloaded, all that contrib downloaded? Um, I, I've been around Drupal since probably 4.5, and I remember downloading, you know, the zip files and unzipping them and dropping them in place and manually, and, you know, secure FTP into the server, and, uh, and, and you know, sometimes you, that's still handy to use those techniques, but, um, but a make file actually, um, and for a Drush make file actually give, is a text file that has all the, pieces you need to put together your distribution. So that could be modules, themes, libraries. Again, talking about the jQuery. What that does is that says, when I run Drush Make, pull all those pieces down to the file system and give me all the files I need to make it happen. Um, the, the last piece that a lot of folks use that build distributions is a, is a stub file. Um, this is a shortened make file that basically has, declares which version of Drupal core you want to pull in, so you could pull in Drupal 7, you could pull in dev versions of 7, you could pull in Pressflow, you could, you know, this, this little short stub file it just lets, just declares the core and then says, oh, and after you pull down core, go grab, go grab the full installation profile, the full distro, and what happens is Drush Make goes and checks out all of these files that are listed here that are part of that distribution and looks for the next make file and starts building off of that. Um, and um, so that, that's kind of handy. And some of the instructions on all the distributions actually you know, say, here's how to make your stub file to pull everything down. Um, so that's definitely handy. So those are some of the pieces. But I want to sh show you some of this. Um, let's see here if I can. Uh, I'm going to go to. Okay. I'm actually going to show you some of the contents of some of these files and just give you a, a feel. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but this is a, a project that, that Zach actually started. It's called Open Blog. And uh, this is just a checkout. Um, I get checkout, and I wanted to show you some of the files. So we talked about the info file. This is, this is what it looks like. Um, you basically have the name of the project. You've got a description, um, and you've got uh, your core designation. And then we basically have from there all the dependencies that this, these are modules that, that the distro relies on. Um, and so. If you've, if you've already pulled down through your make file, uh, maybe a new module you want to include with a distribution, and you want that thing to be enabled by default once, the, once it installs, so you don't have to go to the modules page and do that, you can just add a new dependencies line, equals, and the name of the module. So it's kind of it's super handy. Um, and uh, let's see here. Um, so yeah, let's, let's jump to the, uh, um, let's jump to the, to the make file. Well, this, this is, some of these files are named a little different because that's part of how Drupal packages it, how you have to package it for Drupal. But um, so, um, so this is the, yeah, this is, this is basic, Zach saying this is, you know, in the Drupal.org distribution setup, this is the stub file that tells you, you know, include this make file. So it's just saying include that file. That's the version of core we want. Um, and go ahead and grab this version. Um, of open blog, so it's pulling the dev version, checking out with git. Um, let me grab this and move it over. Um, and it's declar that's declaring the URL to download it, the branch, you can specify the branch. This is Drush Make stuff, so this is all documented under Drush Make. Um, nothing crazy here. And the type, you want to tell it it's a profile, so it knows that, that's hey, we're going to build off of this. Um, what's that? Is that right? Oh, this is, you know what I was looking for. 
he knew, he knew right away. Um, this is this is what you I would consider just you know if you weren't doing a full Drupal or .org distribution, um, this this could be just your sole make file in the in the package if you if you didn't have a stub. So this this declares this is where we're actually declaring the modules to download and the version numbers that we want to pull and. Um, and I will say this, I think with anybody that manages sites with deployment systems, whether it's their own deployment systems or Agar or other tools, declaring version number is real important because you're guaranteeing that this build works the way you expect it and test it. Because we've had issues where, I, I know Zach and I have had issues with some, some modules that had a recent update and then things broke and we were able to point back and say, no, just use this one for now until those issues are resolved. Um, so that's really handy to, to declare version numbers. Um, and I'm scrolling through. So here's where you can declare themes. They're projects on Drupal.org, so you, they work the same way as a module. Um, but because uh, uh, Drush is aware that this is, these are themes, it's going to know to place it automatically in the themes folders. And by the way, I didn't mention this. All these files, when you pull down, when you run Drush Make, and we'll see this, all these files go into your profiles folder. So they'll be, uh, if you don't declare destinations, there will be, you'll see a modules folder, a themes folder, uh, you, a, lot, a lot of times, if it's not automatic, we'll use, uh, we like to generally put libraries in a libraries folder so that you, you, you kind of have an organization and it's not just one folder with a bunch of projects listed. Um, that's kind of handy. And here's an example of libraries at the bottom where we're pulling in an 1140 CSS grid. Um, and uh, and I, think, I think we had to use the libraries API module to actually tell it to drop it in the libraries folder and to be aware to look in profiles libraries for the for that location. Um, so so other files. This is the this is the dot profile, and um, so th this 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 file is uh, pretty simple. And and uh, uh, all all we're doing here is a is, is a you know form alter uh, to grab the site name and and declare it. Um, I think it's just declared off the host name. Um, Oh, there, okay, it's wrapping. Um, yeah, it's just grabbing a server name and saying, hey, make this the site name once it installs um, from the server name, just a handy function. I think this code just came out of core because um, a lot of times we use it um, just because it's, it's handy to have. But you can add other hooks in here to do other things, um, so keep that in mind. The dot install file, um, this, is, this, is, this is great. So this is where you can do things like Install your markdown filters, and a lot of this code too is out of core, and it's been tweaked. You know, I, you know, Zach, I'd speak to it. You know, you can ask him, but I'm pretty sure he got code from some of the core stuff implementations because it's done right, and and then he's done his own thing because he's written install profiles from scratch. So he he went in and has made all kinds of changes, but um, but he's added the video filter because OpenBlog uses the video filter um, with some settings. But these are these are the uh, input formats, and we'll scroll down and. Um, he's, uh, he's disabling Bartik um, and, uh, cause we want to use other themes and, uh, just various other, so this is just a lot of configuration type stuff, setting content types. Um, so again, this is the open blog project. So if you get a drupal.org slash project slash open blog, there'll be a link here in a minute too, to check that out. Um, you can actually download that and kind of look through the code and get a feel. Another good example for that, um, so, um, so you know, talking on the deployment side, um, that's some of the pieces you need to create distributions. Start, starting on the deployment side of things, there's always the manual install, and there's nothing wrong with this. So you can download, again, the files. Uh, you can download uh, Drupal.core and put a profile, install profile right inside the profiles folder and just run a standard install. Um, I, you know, you don't want to overlook that. <laughs> a lot of us have deployment scripts and other tools to make things happen, um, you know, in an automated fashion when you're dealing with lots of sites, but, um, you know, this is, this is something that lots of people download Drupal and just need to install one site and they're just running one blog or one, uh, you know, company site, corporate site or whatever. Uh, so people still need to be able to do that. And so you want to test, that's another point, you want to test your distributions and install profiles against manual install, other tools that you can that you have the ability to test with, like Agar and other things like that. So, so another option is you can use deploy, your own custom deployment scripts. So this is probably more common than not. You know, folks have deployment scripts that they've written and, and they have a 
you know, they have a lot of pride in the deployment scripts and they're, they, they love their deployment scripts. Um, the only, this is fine, I think it's perfectly fine. The only issue I would say with that is your custom deployment scripts have been vetted by you and maybe a few other people on your team. So there are at least other options to consider to um, Ager. Um, there are other options to consider that, that have code that's been vetted by many people. And, and uh, that was not a shameless plug, but it was. And um, so, but I, there's nothing wrong with deployment scripts. If it does what you want, it also needs to, you know, to work there for you. So that's totally cool. Um, so, and, and then obviously Ager's another option. So, um, um, so I, at this point, I wanted to, you know, just make mention that uh, Zach has an Ager presentation coming up next, and he's going to be talking about some, some fun stuff with that. So, and it's not just Ager, too. It's, it's, it's Jenkins, and it's how to manage it, and, and continuous integration, and a lot of things he's doing. But there's a link to the community Ager project. It's worth checking out. Um, having used Ager quite a bit, it, it, it works for a lot of things. It's not perfect for everything. But it's always one of those tools in the tool bag that you should evaluate and see, is this, is this what we need? It may not be what you need, it's, you know, um, but it's, it's great if you have to kind of host your own little internal cloud yourself, that kind of thing. Um, and there are services, there are companies that do, will do Agar hosting for you if you just want to do that. But then again, there's DevCloud, there's, you know, Pantheon, there's a lot of other services out there that, that, that do this kind of thing for you and, and even more so. Um, <clears throat> so. So there's a little tool in uh, Drush 5 that's, that's kind of neat. So for a while there's been Drush site install, which is a great, so this is kind of the local de, you know, testing and you always want to test your distribution locally. So Drush site install or Drush SI allows you to declare, you can declare a uh, username, password, your, your database connection string. And when you run it, it basically will, it'll execute, once you've done the Drush make and everything, it'll execute and run the profile from command line. So you don't have to go through the, you know, pick your profile and enter the site username, password, email address, and all that stuff. You do it through command line, and then you can go and, and uh, set up a vhost locally or however you do that for your local environment and go and check out the, the site. <clears throat> but what Drush 5 introduced um, uh, Drush Quick, uh, Quick Core Drupal, which is Drush QD for short. And, um, this takes, this is kind of like, they took a lot of the Drush SI pieces and they added, uh, if you have, ac you know, uh, local access to a PHP CGI um, server, uh, or um, I believe in uh, PHP 5.4, there's now a web server built in for local dev. This isn't production stuff, but it's great for local testing and things. Um, what this will do is this will actually uh, get, you know, basically run your profile and then start up you know, a, a local web server on a port, launch your default browser, and you will be logged in to the admin user of the site, the UID one. And it's, it's pretty neat. So a lot of use cases. Testing distros are great. I think doing patch, patches for issue queue stuff is great, so you can quickly fire off a Drupal 7. You know, again, you can make a little distro just and a stub file just for your standard config and then test your modules if you've got people committing patches to you. Um, so, so anyway, got the little open blog logo. And there's the open blog um, link, so check that out. I had to pick some distro to do this off of, and open blog is, is, a, is one that I like. Um, so, so right now I've got, I'll be honest with you, I've got an, I have an iPhone connected to a MacBook Pro Tether and USB, but I've got backups, so I'm just giving everybody a heads up. This will be interesting. I'll just. Control C out if it doesn't work, you know, it takes too long or whatever. But um, what we've got here is um, is a so we've got a stub file, um, and uh, this is basically saying use uh, you know use Drupal, not you know not Pressflow or some other uh, version of Drupal, um, and uh, you can declare, you can actually declare which version two that you'd like. But it, then it says, hey, kick off a profile, go get open blog, and we're getting the uh, development branch of the seven development branch. Um, so we've got this, this, this thing, now how do we get our code? Right now we don't have our code downloaded. And in my, so my folder open blog dash files, that's got a lot of my backups in case this doesn't work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do drush make um, open blogs, 
So we're declaring which make file, which dev file to launch. And I'm going to do, I'm going to make the destination folder is going to be open blog dash demo slash Drupal. And there's a reason I'm going two levels deep. I want, I want, I want the, um, all the, the root of Drupal to live underneath open blog demo. It just makes Drush QD a little easier because Drush QD by default uses SQL Lite, just as a quick way to test things in place. So I want all those files to be contained in a directory. And uh, we're going to run that. And uh, this will be interesting. See what happens here. So we're downloading Drupal Core. It's going to start pulling down all the components that it needs. Um, does, at this point, does the folks have questions? Are there things we're questioning? Mostly related to this topic. I, I, I don't mean questioning just your life or any philosophical things. Will? Um, you mean like just like using a full profile versus just a make file by itself kind of thing? So, um, so basically, the two things you named, the, the make files and then the installation profiles added together makes a distribution. So the make file is still beneficial. Like if, you, if you're not doing any configuration and you don't care about that site launching with any configs or anything like that, you can, you can forget the installation profile and you can just have your make file run that to get your code down just like we did here. And basically just say, okay, I'll click and configure and set it up. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can you know, go ahead and pick the minimal or uh, standard profile based in Drupal 7 and go for it. But if you're wanting to do um, you know, all the configurations, add custom content types, um, ha launch off, uh, you know, have features included as, as part of your distro, things like that, then you definitely want to have that install profile uh, be a piece of that. And, 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 and I don't want to make it sound like you have to have both or you just have to do Drush Make. You can also just do an install profile, just download in some other fashion Drupal core and then drop that profile in there. So it, there's a lot of flexibility in this world that wraps up in that. Does that, does that help? Is that cool? Hey, Robert, did you? I'm so glad you asked this because I forgot to put this in my slides. Um, so there's, there's several ways, that's a great question because, um, and, and I know OpenBlog is already moving in that direction, is gonna have upgrades um, from conversations I've had with Zach, but uh, you don't have to support any upgrades. This can be the one shot install for the dev shop or the individual starting a new site and you're not gonna do upgrades. So that's one option. If you wanna do upgrades in the uh, profile.profile, .profile, so one option is you could do a hook update you know, number, so just like you would hook update your modules. Um, is the dot profile the right place? I think. Here you go. So, so definitely, and, and so what, what Zach's doing here, what he's saying he's doing here is he's using, in, in Open Blog, he's, he has a, um, a, a feature and he's got the dot install added to that feature and that's where he can put hook update number functions in to update it, which it would just be following if you search, you know, hooks to update Drupal modules, it's the same functionality. And, and Robert, I was incorrect, I realized thinking about it. You wouldn't, if, you, if you're not doing it this way, don't put it in dot profile, you'll just use the dot install in your, in your um, distro uh, or your installation profile and, and you can put the updates in there also. But what this means for people that use Agar or even if you don't use Agar or other tools, that you can build new platforms out and migrate to the new version of that build and that's where it gets real powerful. 
you don't need Agar to do that. You can always just download a new version and just move the database over manually in some fashion. And it's, just, it's doing the same thing Agar's doing, um, or your deploy scripts, you know, um, that, that do the same thing. So, uh, but that's important. I mean, you want to plan for uh, uh, updates. You know, Zach could have cho you know, chose it's, it's, it's open source. He could have said, yeah, I'm not supporting it. This is what you get out of the box. I'll update it. Good luck. You're on your own. And maybe that's applicable in some areas because you know people are going to do their own thing from there and it doesn't, you know, they're, they're, they're going to vary so far from once they run it initially that it updates are, are not a huge deal. But in, in this project, it, it makes a lot of sense because you're, you were trying to get people with this project. It, it, I think I can speak to some vision here, but, you know, and he'll talk more about it, but trying to, get, trying to create some other ways and there's some other projects going on too in this vein to make it easy for people just to roll a blog simply, in a simple blog. Um, so we've got, the, we've got Drush, Drush Make has done its thing, pulled down, pulled down all the files that it needs. And so this is, so now we have a open blog demo directory. And uh, so what we're gonna, so there's, you know, there's Drupal on one level down, okay. So this is just, you know, it's, it's all it's done is pull down uh, Drupal core, whichever version specified, I think 714, it's, it's specified explicitly right now. But, um, but, you know, you can change that if you needed to for some reason. You can also, there's also ways, by the way, I'll just throw this out here, I'm not gonna get into it right now. There are ways to do patching with Drush, Drush Make and with install profile, so you can patch, I won't say it, core. You can do that if you have to. Sometimes we have to do that for some functionality, and it's, but it's not condoned, I'm not condoning it. Um, it's best to stay away from that unless you absolutely have to. But uh, what's, mo what's probably more common is that you just need a special patch. Maybe there's an issue for a module that you really have to have in your distro and you need to patch that. Drush Make has a method for patching, uh, adding patches once it downloads the modules. Um, you need to really thoroughly test this stuff though because you know, don't just grab the, you know, the patch that somebody does, this fixes my problems because you know, those things are vetted over time in issue queues. Um, so if we, I just want to show this real quick. If you go to the profiles folder, you'll notice we now not only have minimal standard and testing, which is by default Drupal 7, we have open blog, which if you go into this, this guy, it's the same files that I had checked out in another location on my file system, so just, just to prove that this thing actually works. Huh? Okay, so changes are happening. See, this is, it's, it's communities moving forward all the time. Changes happen, I've got an old version. Uh, but, um, but that's part of the fun of it. So, and, and I will say OpenBlog is being actively uh, uh, changed and, and updated frequently. It's a great project if you're interested in blog sites. And, uh, and, and so I definitely, definitely want to say, hey, any, any contributions and ideas would be great. But um, so our next little piece, and I'm gonna have to copy this. Uh, I'm gonna copy this and then we'll talk about what this does. All right. Thank goodness I do standing desk because this is easy. Standing up here and doing this now, it's made it a lot easier than it used to be. Um, carbon copy clone. Um, must be 12 new. So, so we're going to paste in. Okay. So again, Drush QD is a great little tool, part of Drush 5, to quickly get a, uh, a site running, configured. And uh, I've, you don't have to do all these switches and things. I'll just quickly tell you what I'm doing here, but it's a little self-explanatory for some of it. <clears throat> We're declaring that the profile we want to execute is open blog. We're going to use an existing uh, core, which means it's already downloaded on the system. They don't have to go down. So that's part of Drush QD also. It'll go and download and fetch modules for you and core. So check that out. It's, it's really cool. And I'm declaring the folder where the root of the Drupal uh, install is. Uh, I'm using cache because I'm on an iPhone. Um, so that way, if since I've already downloaded this off Wi-Fi somewhere else, it's going to use Drush's cache to, you know, doesn't need to re-download 714. I encourage using caching too and testing because somebody's paying for this bandwidth and it's usually, you know, through Drupal Association, I think, funds and things. So bandwidth costs, so, so uh, be, be kind. There's a lot, of, a lot of ways like that to cache that stuff. And uh, just the dash Y, which is, you know, and Drush is like a lot of command line tools just to skip all the questions and answers. We don't need that. And then uh, Watchdog is something I usually do with Drush QD. What that does is when we're done, we're going to have a terminal. The terminal window is going to show you all the, 
um, requests and, and things that the web server is executing, but it, it, what this does, it interjects all watchdog, Drupal watchdog uh, log filings right into in line with uh, the file server log, so that's kind of cool. So let's run it, let's just let's get over it. Come on, Shrop, stop talking, just run it. Um, this will take a little bit, it, it's not a few seconds, um, because the, the more complicated the, the profile is, the more it's gotta execute and do, but um, this is sort where the magic happens. So we'll use this segue for any, any questions at this point. Ty, go for it. That's a great question. I really don't know. I, my guess, I'll tell you my guess. Okay. My guess is, is that it's less than a lot. It could be more than others, depending on the distribution. Um, obviously, Open Atrium probably has more, you know, than, than uh, Open Blog or, uh, you know, other things that, that we're always cooking up for distributions. But, um, my, but big picture, I would say overall, average is probably less overall because this is, and that's why I want to do a session on it and get more people using this stuff. It, it is a little bit more getting into an intermediate and advanced kind of stuff. It's getting, it's stretching developers of so folks in the room that are strictly developers and our SAs. It gets into the SA territory because there's dependencies on Drush and tools and things that have to happen. So, th so a lot of times these things in a group, in a team setting wind up being a, a group effort. You know, you've got system administrators helping on the parts they need. You've got developers, you know, testing and working on the distribution, but um, that's my guess, but I don't, I don't have any data on it. It's a good question. I mean, um, and obviously on the project pages, you can get an, some idea of, but there's a bunch of distributions out there, and some of them are really old, so um, just like anything else, you know, download, test it, try it, but, you know, uh, I like to sort projects a lot of times on Drupal.org by, you know, frequently updated or other methods just to see what people are using and what or what's relevant and what's popular, that kind of thing. Um, and I don't know if this doesn't run, I've got a backup copy to pull. Things are happening. There we go. And this was this was over iPhone. Yay. It does do that. Drush QD does that. And you can specify Firefox. You could say, um, you know, something it may be hyphen hyphen browser equals Firefox or Chrome or so you can, you can tweak that. I think it's just gonna grab the default system. Um, and I've only tried this on OS 10. I hear that it, it's, it works on Linux from people that have used on Linux. Uh, Windows, I don't have any idea about, but I know the Drush team is really working hard to support more and more on Windows to give those tools to the Windows developers, um, so. Yeah, I haven't looked at the code to see how they're doing it, but I, but you're specifying just the just the common name for it. So what I've seen in in demos is people literally just say Firefox all lowercase. So I don't know if it's looking at a number of possible names. There's, I've not seen anybody use version number. That's a good question, but it, it might not. And, and and my best suggestion for that is is go go uh, check out the Drush, dig into the Drush code. There, there'll be a command under Drush when you download Drush and Drush Make, there's a commands folder, and that one of the commands has this stuff in it where it's going and figuring out that, uh, you know, those parameters that you, those arguments. You'll, you'll be able to see exactly how they're doing it right in the code. Um, that's one thing that's awesome about open source. And just, just to prove this is a working site, we can uh, go to modules, and uh, well, we know it's a working site, it's working, but um, let's look at some a lot of these dependencies were declared in the profile, but we've got the Google Fonts API, which is part of the font your face. It's a pretty neat little thing. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So is that, is that module? No, Profiler, Profiler, it, it doesn't do every, you know, it doesn't do everything because it, it has to be programmed to do what it does, but 
it, it does a lot of common tasks. So it will definitely help with that um, to do a full install profile and, and whatever that means. Because an install profile could be anything. That's why there's got to be a, a file somewhere where you just, you're just throwing in hooks and PHP code to do custom stuff. But you know, back in, in Drush five days, I believe there was a module that would try to do build install profiles. But I, I don't know how great that would be. I never used it. It may have been awesome. Um, I just don't know how great it would be because it would, it's a situation where whoever's writing that module has got to figure out every possible thing that they think somebody's going to want to do, which is, is kind of crazy. So, 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 but to help, to help you along before you have to get into writing code as a site builder, yes, the profiler module, you'll include that as a, as a library, download, and drush make, and, and the, the documentation will tell you to grab some code which will basically run that function and you put it in your dot profile um, file of your, it's just, and you'll just copy paste, put it in your dot profile. That includes the profiler functionality then, because it's executing. And it, it, I can't remember everything it does, but I think you can do like, you can custom have menus out of the box, content, default users, some default roles. It, it's, it, um, what it does is you'll put all that in your dot profile still, but it just extends what dot profile does basically. So, so I would definitely check it out if, if you're coming from a site builder standpoint. I mean, I use it and I'm a developer, but I, I, sometimes it's nice to just, you know, enter configs and just make it cleaner. And then, but at some point you'll have to probably start adventuring into the world of writing some PHP to do certain things you want. It's just, it's going to happen. But, but you can always copy stuff from core and mimic some of the things that maybe the standard install does. I would, Yeah, I think, and that, you, you may be the perfect candidate for this talk. I mean, and that's to say, here, this is kind of what I was looking for. Here are some tools. It's going to take more research than what we can talk through in an hour. Uh, but, you know, we've all that have done it have been through that. Um, you know, certainly installing profile, install profiles can be more advanced, but don't let it, don't let it scare you away. Um, there's a lot more tools than there used to be. I mean, I remember back in the day when, um, uh, some, some Drupal shops that don't even exist anymore were really pushing the install profile and made some of that happen in the core. And, you know, they could see the future of this is where this stuff is headed, I think, in a lot of ways. But um, with Profiler and, and Drush Make and things, the, the, there's a lot of tools there to really get you a long ways. And then, you know, so there will be some of that pain point to get, I said pain point, I'm sorry, Scott. Um, there'll be some, you know, a little bit of pain to get through the next, um, to, to that last phase of, Probably mostly, mostly the stuff you're putting in a dot install file is the piece that I would say is where your a lot of the bulk of your code is. Is it dot install? Am I getting it? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, <clears throat> and um, but you know, if you guys have other questions, that's pretty much all I have. We can keep talking distros, and I, I, I'll I'll, th I'll throw out something. I did. I, I always do this, but I decided not to. I decided not to put this in the slide deck because I didn't want to make things even even more complicated. But I will throw out something that's worth taking a look at. Um, I don't even know how I feel about this. So I'm not weighing in yay or nay that this is a great idea. But 
there's a there's a large movement uh, part of uh, the contrib Drupal community uh, creating applications, and there's a lot of application servers hitting out there. Um, what what these um, let's take us we'll 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 not talk about the part where you you charge for applications. That's a whole other philosophical thing, and I, I'm not versed to get into that. But the concept here is that. You know, when you run Drush Make and, and uh, or if you install a feature, for instance, a great example, you install a feature, it, you need to have those modules in place already. So um, that makes features perfect for distributions and install profiles because you've already run Drush Make, you have your modules in place. The, the uh, applications um, servers that you can run now, and, and I, I can't remember the project, it's slash project slash applications or apps, apps slash apps is, is uh, let you run your, you can have your own server, kind of like a, back in the day, if you're familiar with feature servers, kind of akin to that, but what, what, what I know about those, what, I haven't run my own yet, but what I've uh, heard about those is that it will actually pull down the dependencies, so if, if, uh, if you need you know, module X, Y, and Z, it'll go ahead and download those and then put them in place where it needs to be and in addition to executing configuration code. Um, I'm not sure that that really fits in the distributions, it, it, it could, I guess, but I don't, I don't see it. Where I see its place is you have an existing Drupal site and you want to go ahead and add additional functionality easily to it. And so there's some really neat things coming out, um, uh, like, like movements on just, again, other blog pieces and event calendars and things like that. People just say click and install this additional functionality. So um, I think that's neat. So that's all I have, unless you guys have questions or whatever. Real. Cool. Cloud stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies these bugs are getting discovered and, and fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the you know of the open source community. It is global and it's definitely because of the users. Community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on to IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out, and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, everyone can see how CloudStack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of CloudStack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 <laughs> people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's an assumption. I think when you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You'll have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Is, uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail and CloudStack is designed to handle number one that mass scale number two it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers Lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is the key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support. Uh, different network models. You can pick up whatever suits you better. 
Pulsetech management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint. It's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using CloudStack. They were using it to transcode video. And I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers. And then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. CloudStack is vast. Uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like a master of all those realms. I think CloudStack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits to the CloudStack. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and administrators of phone systems. Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business-changing applications, from small office phone systems to mission-critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on Astros. Digium has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game-changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again, this time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones it extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Astros based systems, including our own SwitchFox based product, these are the easiest to use, best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Astros or SwitchFox based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Astros. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Asterisk cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again.